we are asked to determine the domain and range from the graph of the function, where the domain is a set of all possible inputs or x values, and we always find the inputs or x values along the horizontal axis, and therefore we can determine the domain by determining how the graph behaves moving from left to right. Notice how the leftmost point on the graph is here at this open point where x equals negative five. Because this point is open, there is no function value at x equals negative five, but the inputs or x values do approach negative five. So let's make an open point on the x-axis at negative five. Again, because negative five is not in the domain of this function because of the open point. And notice how the rightmost point on this graph is here where x equals positive one. Because the point is closed at positive one, positive one is in the domain of the function. And also notice from negative five to positive one, there are no holes or breaks in the graph, and therefore all the values between negative five and positive one are also in the domain of the given function. For any of these x values, there will always be a corresponding function value, which means the domain of the given function expressed using interval notation is the interval from negative five to positive one, where the interval is open on negative five, meaning it does not include negative five, and therefore we use a rounded parenthesis to the left. And then the interval is closed on one, because one is in the domain. To show one is in the domain, we use a square bracket to the right. Remember, negative five and one do have to be in this order. These values should be in the same order they would occur on the number line. We can also express a domain using inequalities. We could also say that x is greater than negative five and less than or equal to positive one. And now let's find the range. The range is a set of all possible outputs or y values, and we always find the outputs or y values along the vertical axis. And therefore we can determine the range by analyzing how the graph behaves vertically. Notice how the lowest point on the graph is this point here where the y value or output is negative three, and because the point is closed on the graph here, negative three is in the range. And now if we look for the highest point on the graph, notice this closed point here is the highest point on the graph where the y value or output is positive one. Because the point is closed, one is in the range of the given function. And also notice how the function takes on every y value between negative three and positive one and therefore the range is the closed interval from negative three to positive one. Expressing this using interval notation, we have the closed interval from negative three to positive one because it includes both endpoints. We use a bracket to the left and to the right. Or using inequalities, we can say that y is greater than or equal to negative three and less than or equal to positive one. I hope you found this helpful.